So how do we observe cells or anything too small to be seen with the naked eye? Well, we use microscopes. In this lesson, you'll have to learn the parts of a light microscope and you'll also need to know the size of the things that you see. So micro comes from the Greek word micros, meaning small, and scope means to observe or view, you know, just to look at stuff. So a microscope is an instrument to observe, to view small things. Microscopes like what Van Leeuwenhoek developed were very good and could magnify things up to 500 times their actual size. But we've come a long way since the 1660s. Now you'll be more familiar with what is known as a light microscope or an optical microscope. And this is a piece of lab equipment that you should be quite familiar with. So it goes without saying that you may have to label it up or at the very least you'll be expected to know the parts of it even in the exam. So I'll quickly list the parts that you're expected to know. A. Here we have the eyepiece or the ocular lens and of course you look through these to see the sample. At B we have the objective lens and it is the objective lens that is the closest thing to the sample and is going to magnify the specimen that you're observing. At C we have the stage so this is where you're going to place that sample. Sometimes you'll see these little clips on the microscope to hold your slide in place while you kind of have a look around. At D, I have the diaphragm. Now this is beneath the stage. And it's got a little dial on it so that you can focus a beam of light through the sample so that you can see the sample more clearly. At E, we have our light source. So we're gonna switch the microscope on and illuminate our specimen. Here at F, the microscope has a nice solid base on which it stands. At G and H, we have the coarse and the fine adjustment knobs. These dials you're going to move in order to bring your sample into focus. The larger dial, the outer one, the, the coarse adjustment knob, is used for the lower magnifications to bring the sample into focus, whilst the inner dial, the fine adjustment knob, is used at very high magnifications to fine tune the focus. And finally at I we have the arm of the microscope, which is used to pick up the microscope so you can move it from one place to another. Why do you need to know any of this? Well. Microscopy is really important for biologists since, as you know, all living things are made up of cells. And these basic building blocks of life are pretty tiny. In fact, the vast majority of living organisms are too small to be seen in any detail with the human eye. And their cells, and their organelles of course, can only be seen with the aid of a microscope. So, how do you know then how big a cell is when you zoom into it under a microscope? You're going to use something called the I am triangle. But before we discuss how to use the I am triangle, let's make sure you know the difference between a couple of important terms. And those terms are magnification and resolution. So what is magnification? Well, magnification quite simply is how much bigger a sample appears to be under the microscope than it is in real life. And resolution, well, that's just the ability to distinguish clearly between two points on the image. So the amount of detail or clarity. And the resolving power of a particular microscope depends on the wavelength or the form of radiation used. Right, so we have those key terms boxed off. Next, we need to use the I am triangle to work out the size of the things that you see. Let's take a look. This triangle is gonna be really useful when it comes to your exams and being able to work things out, the size of stuff. So the eye at the top represents the image. Now this could be a photograph, a diagram, a sketch, whatever, it's not real, it's just an image. Whilst the A represents the actual thing, so the real size of whatever it is that you're looking at. The M represents magnification. So you'll use this I am triangle when you're expected to work out the size of something. So the I am triangle can be used to work out the image size. So if, you're, if you've been given the magnification and the actual size, you can go actual multiplied by magnification to give you the size of the image. More commonly though, you may be asked to find out the actual size of something. So here, if we're going to find out the actual size, we cover up the A and then we're left with image over magnification. So cover A and using the image size given, we can take that number and divide it by the magnification given. And finally, you may need to work out the magnification, but you've been given the image size and the actual size. So here, we cover over magnification and you're left with image over actual. So you simply divide the size of the image given by the actual size of the image given. So let's take a look at some really basic examples. 
If the actual size of a cell is 0.02 millimeters, and it is shown in an image that has been magnified 300 times, then what is the size of the cell in the image? Well, for this we can see that we've been given the actual size and the magnification. So we can cover the I, because that's what we're working out, which leaves us with the actual multiplied by the magnification. So we have 0.02 multiplied by 300, which gives us six millimeters. Now don't forget those units and always work in the units that are given in the exam. Later, you may need to convert millimeters into micrometers or micrometers into nanometers or whatever, but we'll get to conversions later. Next, let's say we have an image of a cell, measures six millimeters, and we have the magnification, which is 300 times. What is the size of the actual cell? So this time we're looking for actual, so we're left with image divided by magnification. So we have six divided by 300, which equals 0.02 millimeters. Finally, we may be asked to work out the magnification. So if you're given the image size, which in this case measures six millimeters, and you're also given its actual size, which is 0.02 millimeters, by how much has that image been magnified? So here we'll cover over magnification because that's what we're looking for. And we're left with image divided by actual. So we know we have an image size of six millimeters. So we have six divided by the actual size of 0.02, which equals a 300 times magnification. Right, so that's pretty much it for this lesson where you've labeled up a microscope and you have been able to work out the size of stuff. What you need to do now is go and download the worksheets and test yourself. Can you label up the microscope and can you complete these little calculations using the I am triangle. Once you've done those, you can carry on to the next lesson. Until then, take it easy.